Are you ready? Can I talk? Yeah, what's you the mind? answer? Can I, do you mind? I would like for you to answer the okay, question. Okay, it's very simple to answer. That's why I asked it. It's very simple to You're a nasty person, I'll tell you. <laughs> so, so, there was a town hall on CNN, right? And Caitlin Collins was the host. Now, remember, Caitlin Collins was one of Don Lemon's two co-hosts. It was her and Poppy Harlow. They were the two co-hosts. And I think Caitlin Collins is the person that said that Don Lemon had screamed on her or whatever. Have I think is why you held on to those documents when you knew the federal government was seeking them and then had given you a subpoena to return them. Are you them. ready? Are you ready? Can I talk? Yeah, what's you the mind? answer? Can I, do you mind? I would like for you to answer the okay, question. Okay, it's very simple to answer. That's why I asked it. It's very simple to You're a nasty person, I'll tell you. <laughs> The, the hand movements, I, I love them. Shout, shout out to Trump for that. Okay, here's something else. Or race, if you are the Republican nominee and you are in that 2024 race, will you commit tonight to accepting the results of the 2024 election? Yeah, if I think it's an honest election, absolutely, I would. Will you commit to accepting the results of the election regardless of the outcome? Do you want me to answer it again? If I think it's an honest election, I would be honored to. And right now, we are so far ahead of both Democrat and Republican and you know what? If I don't win, this country is going to be in big trouble. It's so sad to see what's happening. But no commitment there on the accepting the results regardless of the outcome. He answered the question. You're badgering. Are, is she a lawyer? Like, is that, is that her background as a lawyer? Badgering the witness. Objection. Huh. If it's an honest election, correct. But, I will. Okay, so not committing to accepting the 2024 election results. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I answered the question. You, you're trying to put words in my mouth. Like, I'm not going to remove, I'm not going to remove my qualification to fit into what you want me to say. I'm going to say, yeah, if it's honest, it is what it is. All right. And then here's something else. Welcome back to CNN's Republican presidential town hall with former President Trump. President Trump, you, we have a lot more voters questions I should note in here in New Hampshire to get to. But I also want to talk about some of the other investigations that you're facing. We talked about others at the top, but one of those is the special counsel's investigation into classified documents that were sure. found at Mar-a-Lago. Why did you take those documents with you when you left the White I House? I had every right to under the Presidential Records Act. You have the Presidential Records Act. I was there and I took what I took and it gets declassified. Uh, Biden, on the other hand, he has 1,850 boxes. He had boxes sent to Chinatown, Chinatown, where they don't speak even English in that Chinatown we're talking about. Uh, can and I, I, I got to stop you right there. Nobody talks about because... him. They talk about uh, him. Uh, you you, you want to hear that? Do you, uh, I'll stop you right there talking about Joe Biden and his boxes. We don't want to go there. You know, it, CNN, Trump was great to go on CNN, but we all know how CNN is. Like, we're not even surprised. You guys are not surprised at how they're treating him right now, are you? I don't think so. Just so you understand, I had every right to do it. I didn't make a secret of it. You know, the boxes were stationed outside of the White House. People were taking pictures of the GSA and the various I people. I got to stop you right there, though, because moving. the Presidential Records Act, which is not well known to a lot of people, I read it. It does not say that you can take documents with you. It says actually that they it are the property you, of the federal government. It says you talk, you negotiate, you, you make a deal. It's not criminal, by the it way. Does not, it's, it does the not Presidential Records negotiate. Act is not criminal. Yeah, so that's that. So Caitlin Collins was a president before, I suppose, and she knows the law better than a, a former president sitting right here. The disrespect is crazy. Let's keep on going. Uh, so Trump, when then when let me just read this right here. Trump, when asked on if he wants Ukraine and Russia to win the war, quote, "I want everyone to stop dying, Russians and Ukrainians, and I'll have that done in twenty four hours." You but said one you of the don't things think you have to do is you have losing. to get the, you have Mr. to President, get Europe. Can I just follow up on that because that's a really important. No, excuse statement me, let me that just follow just up. There. Can you say if you want Ukraine or Russia to win this war? I want everybody to stop dying. They're dying, Russians and Ukrainians. I want them to stop dying, and I'll have that done. I'll have that done in 24 hours. I'll have it done. You need the power of the presidency to do it. But you but won't say the the real answer that she wanted was that. But what she wants to hear is him say that Russia's bad. That's the ultimate thing. Rather than asking who you want to see win, it's are you a Russian asset? That was the question that she really wanted to ask. But what he said was right. It's like, look, I want everybody to stop dying on both sides, which is the humanitarian thing to say. Why would you want to see Russians die or Ukrainians die? Let's stop the war completely. This is a big part of the reason why I voted for Trump the first time and the second time is because he is against the foreign wars. And that's, you know, something that's close to my heart and a lot of you guys as well. 
that was the right answer. But you know, you got your you got your warmongers at CNN that want to see Russia get annihilated. So let's let's see your follow up question or her follow up statement. Say that you want Ukraine to win. You, you know what I'll you say? In, I'll say this. Office. I want Europe to put up more money because they're in for 20 billion. We're in for 170. And they should an be and they should, should equalize. The they have plenty of money. They should equalize. I got with NATO but when I sat down, Ukraine I got them right to now, put up Mr. hundreds President. of billions of dollars that they weren't paying under Obama and Bush and all of these other presidents. That's why they're, they're able to help them fight the war because of the money I got. But, but I let's want talk Europe. About what's to, happening in Ukraine, excuse me, Mr. I want President. Europe to put up more money because they're laughing at us. They think we're a bunch of jerks. We're spending one hundred and seventy billion dollars for faraway land, and they're right next door to that land, and they're in for twenty. I don't think so. It- very, very good question. Don't fall into this whole thing about oh, you got to support Ukraine. That's what you want it? Yeah, go Ukraine. F Russia. Like first of all, why is it even our business to be over there trying to fight them and trying to? No, no, no. We're not going to just keep spending money. What what we're doing right now is spending money to have Ukrainians die so they can fight Russia for us. But why? What's the purpose? Like, if they could just be transparent and let us know why they're doing that, then I will respect respect them more. I'm still not going to agree with it, but I will still respect them rather than just sitting here talking about, oh, it's about Ukraine and we love Vladimir Zelensky. No, no, no. Tell me the real reason why you want to have this whole thing going on. Be honest. How about that? Hi, thank you so much for coming to New Hampshire to answer our questions. My question is regarding the economy. Over the past two years, we have seen the prices for everything skyrocket. From food to gas to utilities and insurance costs, many people's bills are up several hundred dollars a month, including mine. If elected president again, what is the first thing you would do to help bring down the cost to make things more affordable? Drill, baby, drill. We were energy independent. We were soon going to be energy dominant. And nobody had ever done what I did. We got oil down to $1.87. Actually, it fell lower than that in some cases. We had to save the oil companies the, the price was getting. So we were doing incredibly. We had the greatest economy in the history of our country, probably the greatest economy in the history of the world. We were energy independent, soon to be energy dominant. We were going to be bigger than Russia and Saudi Arabia put together times two. We have more liquid gold under our feet than any other nation, any other nation. And these stupid fools ended it. And energy went from $1.87 and even lower for gasoline, for a car. They went from $1.87 to five, six, seven, eight, and even $9. Yep. And your electricity bills went through the roof. Your heating bills went through the roof. And that's what started inflation. And it hasn't stopped because people are paying now for bacon and for eggs and for the two and three times what it was just a little while ago. We created the greatest economy in history. A big part of that economy was I get, got you the biggest tax cuts in the history of our country, bigger than the Reagan cuts, bigger than any. And, and also, Caitlin, also, as you know, we got the biggest regulation and regulatory cuts. We, this place was rocking. And then we were given a gift from China and China paid a big price. And let me tell you something. I took in hundreds of billions of dollars in taxes from China. But prior to COVID coming in, and then I rebuilt the economy again a second time. But we had prior to COVID coming in as, as from China, from Wuhan, which I said it came from Wuhan. Everybody said, oh, you're wrong about that. You're wrong. Mm-hmm. It came from Wuhan. I said it right from day one. So he did say that. Remember that it comes from China. Remember that? Oh, you're racist. Calling it China virus. Oh, you're racist. He was right on point. We had the greatest economy in the world. Here's the story. Uh, they made energy so high, and energy is all invasive. It is massive as an industry and as a cost. It lifted everything. If Mr. You President, made don- say if you made economy. donuts, if you made no matter what you did, and but- we had inflation the likes of which I guess we haven't had, they said, for 52 years, but I think more than that. We had no inflation. We had the lowest energy prices we've had in decades. This country was rocking and rolling. And by the way, we had the most secure border in the history of our country. Very, very well said, Trump. Let's keep on going here. Uh, Oh, this this is an older video. 
and it says Trump destroys Caitlyn Collins at White House press conference. Let's see this older video. This is not something that is more recent. So can I ask you a question? What do you have? Go ahead. I'm, I'm, no, that's I'm, enough. Go ahead. Can I ask? But that wasn't my question. The problem is you don't write the truth. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, what, I want to go I want to go to the next Can I ask you a question about Rick? No, not CNN, please. Go ahead. The White House is not going <laughs> to I told you. CNN is fake news. Don't talk to me. Go ahead, please. But he says he was retaliated against, and that's why he was removed from his job. Do you have a response to that? Okay, next question. Yeah, totally ignoring it. Yeah, yeah. So it might, might, might be a little bit of payback, huh? It might, it might be a tad bit of payback. Or just them just doing their, you know, what, what they do. Let's, let's continue here. There's a few more clips from the, the town hall. If I miss anything, y'all please let me know in the comments. I might be able to find a particular piece of the actual town hall. This might want me to see. Yeah, another three one hours, over 140 officers were injured that day. And a person named Ashley Babbitt was killed. Yes. You know what? She was killed, and she shouldn't have been killed. And that thug that killed her, there's uh -oh. no reason to shoot her. At blank range, cold blank range, they shot her, and she was a good person. She was a patriot. One there was no was reason. There. To, there was no reason. And he went on television to brag about the fact that he killed her. That the officer was not bragging about the fact that he oh, killed he her. But bragging. one person who was at the was yeah, another one. Wow. Yeah. CNN. They, they tell you, they, they, they do their job for sure. Okay, let's, let's talk, let's, let's see this here. Mr. President, one of the people who was convicted was a former policeman, but he was convicted of attacking a police officer, I should note. But when you said you are considering pardoning a large portion of those charged with crimes on January 6th, does that include the four Proud Boys members who were charged and convicted of seditious conspiracy? I don't know. I'd have to look at their case, but I will say in Washington, D.C., you cannot get a fair trial. You cannot. Just like in New York City, you can't get a fair trial. <laughs> Mr. President, one of the... Now, here's something else, though. Um, here's something else. People are criticizing Trump on the right because they say he doesn't do enough for the January Sixers, like he didn't raise any money or whatever. That's what that's what they say. I'm not saying anything about it. I'm just saying that's what uh, a common theme that I hear is. Y'all let me know what you think about that. Is he doing enough for the J Sixers? Back to what happened on that day. He you said did you not weren't. Say that. You, he has testified that. Mr. He did President. not say that. But you said you weren't very involved that day. You did tell your supporters to come to Washington. You tweeted about it about sure, that speech that happened on the rally. Am I allowed so when to they, say that? When they went to the Capitol and they were breaking into the Capitol, smashing windows, injuring police officers, why did you? Why did it take you three hours to tell them to go home? I don't believe it did. Oh, let me pull it out. I have to pull it out. <laughs> So if you look at, on January 5th, the day before, I said, please support our Capitol Police and law enforcement. They are truly on the side of our country. Stay peaceful. Stay peaceful. This was the day before, and this was in the form of Twitter. Now use truth. He said, be peaceful before the whole event happened. Be peaceful. So that was his initial thing. Before, before January 6th, January 5th, be peaceful. Support the police. Truth social, I think it's far superior, okay? I hope everybody's on truth. I hope everybody's on truth. Uh, if you look, January 6th, just at 2, before 2.30, I am asking for everyone at the U.S. Capitol to remain peaceful. This is right after, as it was happening. But what happened is they took it down. I don't know why. I think they took it down because it was so good. They didn't like it being up there. <laughs> I am asking, this is, and we didn't know until I got it back, because now I have 90 million people waiting for me to go back, but I'm on truth, and I'm staying on truth. Listen, I am asking for everyone at the U.S. Capitol to remain peaceful. No violation. It's, we want no violation. We want no violence. Remember, we are the party of law and order. Respect the law and our great men and women in blue. Thank you. That was at 2.30. That was very early. Mr. President, I looked at the same timeline that you did. Once no, I know, but you clear, didn't report that. You know why? Because it was we taken did report down. it. I, I was reporting it was that taken thing. down, and it wasn't. But when it was up. clear, so I mean, like, what are we talking about? He said what had to be said right on time. Here is him roasting Biden. Video. I didn't have a script. I don't need scripts like a certain person that's in but there what time, right now. The, the video. <laughs> it, it came out much later after they had already right attacked there. the Capitol. It was a great video. And. It was a beautiful video, and 
So you're probably talking about um, the whole J6 thing because the question at the bottom says, why did it take you three hours to tell your supporters to go home? You know, it's it, it, it talking about a video that was put out, but he had been saying be peaceful, all this and that, and the third throughout the entire situation and before. You know, the, the whole thing from CNN, from what I was able to see right there, was, you know, kind of a, a hatchet job, really, just trying to make him look bad. Of course, but that's, all, that's what they always do. Oh, from Washington, and it was an interesting night. Uh, Mr. Trump's first lie was told just seconds into the night with his false familiar claim that the 2020 election was, quote, a rigged election. And the falsehoods kept coming fast and furious about the January 6th insurrection, about the threat to Vice President Pence, about Pence's ability to overturn the election, about COVID, about the economy and more. He called a black law enforcement officer a thug. He said people here in Washington, D.C. at Chinatown don't speak English. Oh, from what? <laughs> trigger, trigger, trigger. OK, is there more? Perhaps most chillingly, the day after a nine person jury of his peers in New York found him liable for sexual battery and defamation and ordered him to battery. Is that what they said? You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm talking about? Battery. I thought they said sexual abuse, not battery. That's different, ain't it? Battery seems like something, a whole different thing. They'll just say anything. Just like your man Mitt Romney said, he got found guilty of sexual assault. No, he didn't. They'll say anything, but that's what they do. They'll, they'll take they'll take any little thing and blow it up out of proportion. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is. They'll just add a little thing on it. They'll mistakenly use the wrong word, but they know full well what they say because they say the same things all the time, and they're very crafty with language. They're very crafty. They know what to say, when to say it. They are journalists. They talk on TV for a living. That's what they do. They, they don't make mistakes when they say things. They use their language very carefully. Pay writer E. Jean Carroll $5 million. He made fun of her account of her sexual assault. And many in the audience. Assault? Battery? What? Excuse me? I thought it was abuse, not sexual assault or battery. That's a, that's a criminal charge, ain't it? Did he get... Charged with anything criminal? No, he didn't. So what are we talking about here? Uh, what was this, uh, Jake Tapper? Audience laughed. The, and applauded. The former president making his first appearance tonight on this network since the 2016 election. He spoke with and took questions from New Hampshire Republican and undeclared voters who plan to take part in the GOP primary. And it took place just a day after, as uh, Jake referenced, Manhattan federal jury found him liable of sexually abusing and defaming writer E. Jean Carroll. Well, at least you said, said it right. Liable, sexual abuse, and defaming. That is the correct thing. This man said battery, assault. I mean, he might as well, he might as well just said the R-A-P-E. He might as well just said that and just been totally wrong. Yeah, it's crazy, but that's that's what the that's what the fake news media does. They'll they'll do that all the time. And see, people talking about, you know, uh CNN sucks. It's this reason why we say CNN sucks. It's a it's a reason why we say that because they do things like this. That's the reason why we say CNN sucks. It's crazy, but whatever.